Four things you should not have to pay for. But number one, water. I still don't understand why we gotta pay for this. Water literally comes from the sky, and water takes up 71% of the earth, meaning this shit is abundant. So why are we paying for water bottles full of microplastic? But on top of that, if you don't pay your water bills, getting cut off. With this much water, bro, that shit don't make no sense. But number two, you gotta pay to drive on the road. It's already bad enough you gotta pay for gas, insurance, car note, but now you're gonna slap a toll fee on top of it. I still don't understand why we gotta pay for this. But hey, bro, it's a capitalist country. For number three, fruit and vegetables. This literally comes from the ground and was put on earth for us to eat. But instead, we gotta pay for it genetically. Modified. They literally spray the fruit down with pesticide and chemicals, then sell it to you and tax for it. And that's why people say it's expensive to eat healthy. Whole time it should be the most abundant and cheapest thing to eat. Leave a like if you agree. And for number four, your check. You literally gotta pay to get paid because your money gets taxed. Then you get taxed again every time you buy something. Imagine how much money the government is making off of one person. This shit sound like a scam. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. And if you agree, uh, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I probably agree with all the points that that guy made, man. Straight up, bro. <laughs> I like I like the water one. The water is a serious one. It looks like it's floating, man. Yeah, but that could mean a lot of things. They could be like up in the sky, like making uh, that video. And you know what I mean? Because of how far away they are, you can't see what the boat's on. But like, there's, there's something weird about that video. When John F. Kennedy was killed while riding in a convertible in Texas. Upon investigation, three spent shell casings and a bolt action rifle were found at the scene. The killer was a 24 year old man named Oswald who worked as a book depository employee and had hidden in the Texas school book depository building. On the day of the assassination, Oswald left his wedding ring on his bedroom dresser and set off with a large package. He arrived at work at 8 a.m. and went about his tasks as usual, with the only difference being his frequent gazing out the window. He knew Kennedy would be visiting Texas, but he didn't know the motorcade would pass by his location. The motorcade route was finalized just a few days prior. Originally, they planned to take Main Street through Dealey Plaza, avoiding the Texas School Book Depository and the railroad overpass. However, the route was changed unexpectedly during the procession, which later led to suspicions that Governor Connolly might have been involved. Whether by luck or premeditation, Oswald used his position to station himself on the sixth floor of the depository, where he ultimately had a clear shot at Kennedy in the convertible. With his military training, he was able to accurately hit a moving target, taking Kennedy's life with just two shots. It's crazy, man. It's probably one of the craziest, uh, deepest conspiracy theories of all time. Just that whole situation on, like, what exactly happened and who was up to what and who's to blame for what. Like, you know what I mean? It's one of the biggest question marks in history, bro. Finding more materials for their home planet. At the time, Earth was not home to any intelligent life. They used their advanced technology to combine the DNA of their species with the DNA of the Homo erectus, and with this, they created the first humans. This is how Jesus was born from a virgin mother. The human race was created to be turned into slaves for the Anunnaki. We would harvest the Earth's materials for them. This is why there are massive pyramids on almost every continent. When they were filled up with precious metals and the pyramids were activated, it would send a signal up into the cosmos to alert the Anunnaki that they needed to return and collect what was farmed. This theory comes from ancient Sumerian text, the first ever recorded text from human beings. This is why many ancient cultures have art that depicts extraterrestrial gods. All this evidence is why many people think... That's an interesting uh, topic, man. Like, where humans came from and... Uh, Anunnaki, like what, what, like what species they were, if they're aliens or not, look like it's interesting stuff, man. Sound fake, but are actually real. In the 1880s, Ella Harper, or also known as Camel Girl, was world famous for having a condition that made her knees bend backwards. She traveled the world doing a freak show, making a salary of $200 per week, which is equivalent to about $330,000 in today's money. In 2002, high school student Charles J. Bishop was so inspired from the events of 9-11, he wanted to recreate them. He flew an airplane to the Bank of America Tower in Florida, and luckily there was only one casualty, him. This is Lisa Sparks, and she currently holds the world record for sleeping with the most men in 24 hours. Take a guess what you think it is. 10, 
20, 30, 100? Nope, it's 919. She actually did this in about 12 hours, and if you do the math, it's about every 45 seconds there was a new dude. Uh, Whenever a flood happens, what? the news typically shows That's the streets crazy. and shows a bunch of cars overflowing with water. But what they don't show you is the fact that coffins will actually lift up out of the ground and start floating down the streets. This is why New Orleans builds gates around their cemeteries to keep the dead inside. If you want to see more videos, make sure to like and follow. That, that's probably like every city after like a situation like that there's a flood and then you have a bunch of coffins floating everywhere like every city probably does that now because like yo that'd be super weird just to like see that you know ah! damn Let's bro go! what i understand it now that's crazy like that's far away bro oh, that's, a, that's like a full court shot now. I think, like, honestly, that that had to be like a globe trotter or something because, like, that's like a full court shot, man. Like, forget the windmill, like that the, the like the distance between where that guy was, like, crazy, man, crazy. Making videos with his friends like any other twelve-year-old. Oh my god! Oh my god! But police say this boy is one of the state's worst young offenders. My fear is that we are losing an entire generation of youth. The boy has been charged 73 times with more than 200 offences, including armed robbery, Damn. assault, break and enter, and carrying a knife in public. An alleged crime spree across Sydney over a 15-month period. The court has released him on 70 occasions. That's crazy, But he's bro. accused of repeatedly breaching his bail. We're talking about serious offences that could ultimately take someone else's life. Today, the boy applied for bail on two new charges of armed robbery and car theft. The magistrate telling what? the child's lawyer, you've got your work cut out if you seriously think he's going to get bail today. The court heard he lost his mother four years ago and only met his previously jailed father in December. He's been living with a carer in Western Sydney. Does he need proper help? Um, I won't be answering any questions today, thank you. The prosecution argued against the boy's release, saying his violent behaviour is escalating and they fear for the public's safety. His alleged victims were often young and vulnerable, just like him. Clearly the system is not working. We've got a society that's living in fear of these incidents and we're talking about very violent offences. Offences that deeply troubled the magistrate, prompting him to finally refuse bail. Natasha Squarey, 7 years. That's crazy, man. Like, yo, that kid was like, what, 12 years old, man? Like, it's like the real life Bart Simpson, bro. Like, crazy. Yeah, this happens. It's like the the right way the correct way to like take lines from another rapper you know what i mean you you like slide them in with their own style and you're just paying homage basically you know it's that's the right way to do it even though the two had never met while alive now they rest side by side the infamous great smog of london in 1952 was so dense that individuals walking on the streets couldn't even see their own feet this extreme pollution led to the tragic demise of 4,000 individuals, with several unsuspectingly falling into the Thames River due to the poor visibility. That's crazy. In a distressing event That's in 1998, crazy. Tom and Eileen Lonergan were inadvertently left behind during a dive excursion in the Great Barrier Reef. It was two days before their absence was realized, and a thorough search was initiated. Half a year later, belongings and diving equipment believed to be theirs surfaced, accompanied by a slate bearing the message, please help us or we'll die. Their fate remains a mystery as their bodies were never found. Man, I'm not gonna lie, bro. The one fog uh, clip that the video was talking about, like people couldn't see because of how foggy it was and you just fall into like a lake because you couldn't see like that. That's crazy to me, man. Like what? And jets on my hands power me forward. Now I'm like, bro, what's in bolt? And the best part, it's Naruto style. This is my real life portal suit, just like the spot from Spider Verse. Secret tubes run through the suit painted with Muso black paint. The paint is so dark that it makes 3D objects look 2D, disguising the portal holes. 
Now you can throw stuff right through me. Yeah, that's this is my cool. real bouncing Captain America shield. It's made uh, from fiberglass sick. rings that let it fly like a frisbee and bounce like a ball. Throw it and it comes right back just like the movie. And carbon fiber reinforcements make it indestructible. This is my Thor hammer. A Tesla coil inside lets it shoot 10 foot bolts of lightning. That's actually sick, man. All that looks pretty, like, legit. Like, man, you gotta be pretty smart to make all that, too. So. So trip. So trippy. This is cool right here. So this is like if the fourth dimension existed in our three-dimensional world, this is basically how it would look like. Which is like, your our minds can't like grab the concept of like how it's supposed to look like. So this is like the visual like example of it. But yeah, man, this that's nuts, bro. Yeah, we, we can't actually see it. You know what I mean? We can't actually physically see it, so, you know. Interesting stuff. I just got off the phone with the people. Listen, I just ordered two elephants. Two elephants. A male and a female. Promised land, get ready. Yo. You ever see those squiggly lines in the air? Cross, bro. People may refer to them as floaters. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what these things really are. Typically, mines uh, come in different shapes. They almost look like fractal patterns. Now, they tell you it's an eye condition, but that's false, okay? Just like when they made up the, the so-called demon face syndrome, right? This is all false. Now, we are all aware that we are living in some type of light code simulation. And we only actually see uh, less than 1% of the light photon spectrum. Now, the ones and zeros that make up this matrix are referred to as what's called indinkra code. When computers transmit information, typically this information is submitted through what they call binary or ones and zeros. Here's another visual perspective of indinkra symbols. When we see these floaters, basically what we're seeing is fragments of the matrix glitching. Basically, we're seeing the binary code or indinkra symbols that string together this matrix. Since we only have access to less than 1% of the light photon spectrum, once in a while, we actually may get a little more. And sometimes we start to see a little bit through the matrix. So it may appear as indinkra symbols or binary, which is these little fractal patterns that we may get in our, our visual spectrum. A quantum physicist that studies supersymmetry by the name of Professor James Gates conducted a study in which he discovered that the same binary code that is used in computer transmissions actually makes up the fabric of our reality. This is why a motherboard in a city looks so identical. You can't tell me whether this is a motherboard or a city, I bet. But when the matrix is glitching, sometimes you may see portions of what's running it. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of videos talking about this kind of stuff, how we might be in a simulation, and I think there's like a scientist that proved that we actually are in one, but I didn't really get a lot of details on like whatever that professor said or scientist or whatever, but yeah, man, who knows? Who knows what this is, right? <laughs> 